Chapter 31 Poking the Ghost King, the Crown Prince Seeks Truth, Part 2 Since he said, this skin, that meant that while this body was his true form, the skin wasn't his real one, and this appearance was not his true face. This time, Hua Cheng didn't respond immediately and dropped his arms. Maybe it was all in Xie Lian's head, but Hua Cheng's eyes dimmed a little, and Xie Lian's heart tightened despite himself. When the air froze, Xie Lian knew his question may have crossed the line. Although for the past few days, the two of them had gotten along well, that didn't mean they were so close that he could make this type of request. Without waiting for his response, Xie Lian quickly smiled. I was just asking, don't take it to heart. Hua Cheng closed his eyes, and a moment after, he smiled softly. I'll let you see it someday, if there's a chance. If anyone else said that, it would naturally be perfunctory. Someday usually meant, please forget it. But it was Hua Cheng who said it, so Xie Lin felt that someday meant someday, and it would surely happen. That made him even more curious, and he grinned. Then, I'll wait till the day you feel okay it's to show me. Let's rest for now. After bustling about for half the night, Xilin had long since tossed the idea of cooking to the back of his mind and returned to lying on the straw mat. Hua Cheng also lay down next to him. No one bothered questioning why, after coming clean about their identities, a god and a ghost could still lie together on a crappy mat, laughing and chatting. The straw mat didn't have pillows, so Hua Cheng used his arms, and Xilin imitated him in pillowing his head on his arms too. He mentioned casually, the ghost realm seems so idle. Don't you guys ever need to report back to anyone? Hua Chung not only used his arms as a pillow, but he propped his leg up too. He replied, Report to whom? I'm the biggest one there is. Besides, we all mind our own business. No one bothers anyone. So the ghost realm was made up of many disorganized bands of lost souls and feral ghosts. Xie Lin replied, Is that so? I thought it would be like the upper court, with a central government. If it's like that, have you met any other ghost kings before? I have, Hua Cheng said. Even green ghost Xi Rong? You mean that lowly, vulgar trash? Well, what do I say to that? Xie Lian thought. Yes? No? Thankfully, he didn't need to say anything, as Hua Cheng continued. I greeted him, and he ran away. Xie Lin had a hunch that this greeting couldn't have been your regular sort of greeting. Sure enough, Hua Cheng said casually, And then I received the moniker, Crimson Rain, Sought Flower. So before, when he mentioned wiping out the lair of another ghost, he was talking about green ghost Qi Rong, and this greeting was carnage. What an extraordinary greeting, Xie Lin thought, rubbing his chin. Do you have something against the green ghost Qi Rong? Yeah, Hua Cheng replied. What's that? Can't stand his face. Xie Lin didn't know whether to laugh or cry, thinking, Did you challenge those 33 heavenly officials because you also didn't like their faces? The officials of the upper court all call him vulgar, and even the ghost realm scorns him. Is that true? It's true. Even Black Water is disgusted with him, Hua Cheng replied. Who's Black Water? Xilin asked, then recalled, Oh, is that the one called Ship Sinking Black Water? That's right. He's also known as the Black Water Demon Xuan. Xilin remembered that this Black Water Demon Xuan was also a supreme, but Green Ghost Xi Rong was only almost a supreme and just there for the head count. He asked, interested, Are you close with this Demon Xuan? No. Hua Cheng replied lazily. There aren't many in the ghost realm I'm close with. Now Xie Lian was amazed. Is that so? I thought you'd have many subordinates. Maybe our definition of close is different? Hua Cheng quirked his brow. Yeah, in the ghost realm, those lower than supreme have no right to speak to me. It was an exceedingly arrogant statement, but Hua Cheng made it sound so indisputable and self-evident. Xie Lin smiled softly. You have it pretty good in the ghost realm. It's only so big, not like the heavens. I can barely remember the heavenly officials in the upper court, and there are many more waiting to ascend in the middle court. 
It's like an ocean of names. What good is it to remember them? Don't bother. It's a waste of your brain. Ha Chung said. <laughs> it's kind of offensive if you can't remember their names. The heavenly officials loved their reputations. Hua Chung clicked his tongue. If they can be offended by such a small thing, then they're nothing but narrow-minded trash. After chatting that much, Xie Lin didn't want to dig too deeply into the subject lest they touch on something sensitive, so he changed the topic away from the differences between the two realms. He glanced at the closed wooden door and wondered, Ban Yue, that child. I wonder when she'll come back in. The bold words, I want to save the common people, returned and reverberated in his head, pouring a mess of images in his mind, and Xie Lin had to forcibly push them down. Just then, Hua Cheng spoke up. Those were good words. Which ones? Xie Lin asked. I want to save the world, the common people. Hua Cheng replied leisurely. Xie Lin was thunderstruck. He flipped over and curled into a shrimp, wishing for another pair of arms so he could cover both his face and his ears. He groaned, Salam. Hua Cheng seemed to have nudged closer and deadpanned right behind him. Hmm? What's wrong with those words? Hua Cheng wouldn't back down, and Xie Lin couldn't win against him, so he flipped back over and said helplessly, It's silly. What's there to be afraid of? Hua Cheng said. To dare speak of the people of the world, whether to save or to destroy them, is admirable. The former is harder than the latter, so it's even more respectable. Xie Lin shook his head, not knowing whether to laugh or cry. If you dare to speak, you have to be able to follow through and actually achieve it. He laid an arm over his eyes. Oh, all right. I suppose that's nothing. What Ban Yue said was already pretty good. I've said sillier things when I was even younger. Hua Cheng laughed. <laughs> oh? Like what? Let's hear it. Xie Lin was pensive for a moment, and he smiled softly as he chased his memories. Many, many years ago, there was someone who told me they couldn't live on anymore. They asked me for the reason they were alive, and what was the meaning of their life. He glanced at Hua Cheng. Do you know how I answered? It might just have been Xie Lin's imagination, but there seemed to be light in Hua Cheng's eyes. He asked softly, How did you answer? Xie Lin said, I told them, If you don't know how to live on anymore, then live for me. If you don't know the meaning of your life, then make me that meaning, and use me as your reason to live. As Xie Lin spoke, he couldn't help but let out a small laugh and shook his head. Even now, I don't understand what I was thinking back then. How did I ever have the courage to tell someone to make me the meaning of their life? Hua Cheng was silent, and Xie Lin continued. It really was something that could only have been said back then. Long ago, I really thought I was invincible and fearless. If you asked me to say the same words now, there is no way they would ever leave my lips again. Xie Lin continued slowly. I don't know what happened to that person afterward, but to become someone's reason to live is already a heavy responsibility. How dare I speak of the world? Silence blanketed Pu Qi Shrine. After a while, San Long said quietly, Something like saving the common people, it really doesn't matter how you do it. But, although brave, it's foolish. Yeah, Xie Lin agreed. Hua Cheng continued, Although foolish, it's brave. Xie Lin grinned. Thanks. You're welcome, Hua Cheng said. The two stared at the holy ceiling of Pu Qi Shrine in amiable silence, and Hua Cheng spoke up again after a while. You know, your highness, we've only known each other for a few days. Is it alright for you to say so much to me? Well... Xie Lin huffed. What's the problem? Whatever. Those who have known each other for decades can become strangers in a day. We met by chance, and we may part by chance. If we like each other, then we shall continue to meet. If we don't, then we shall part. At the end of the day, there's no banquet in the world that doesn't come to an end. So let's take it easy, and I'll say what I want to say. Hua Cheng seemed to have chuckled. Then suddenly, he said, <laughs> If... 
Xilin turned his head to face him. If? Hua Cheng didn't turn around, but continued to stare at the dilapidated ceiling of the shrine, and Xilin could only see this handsome young man's left profile. Hua Cheng said softly, If I was ugly. Huh? Xilin gaped. Hua Cheng finally turned his head slightly. If my true appearance is ugly, would you still want to see it? Xilin was taken aback. Is it? Although there's no real reason, I never thought your true appearance would be too horrible looking. Who knows? Ha Cheng said, half jokingly. What if I'm discolored, disfigured, ugly, monstrous, and horrible? What will you do? At first, Xilin thought this line of inquiry was rather fascinating. So the overlord of the ghost realm, the one called the devil incarnate and feared by all in the heavens, would care about his looks? But when he thought about it deeply, he didn't think it was very funny anymore. He vaguely recalled, in the many rumored backstories of Hua Cheng, one said that he was a disfigured child from birth, or something along those lines. If that was true, then he must have grown up discriminated against by others. Maybe that's why he was particularly sensitive about his appearance. Thus, Xie Lin chewed on his words. Well... He used his warmest, most sincere voice. To be honest, the reason I want to see your true appearance is only because, you see, we're already like this. Hmm? Hua Cheng piped up. Like what? Well, we're sort of friends now, right? So if we're friends, then we should be honest with each other. My wanting to see your true appearance has nothing to do with how you look. You asked what I would do, but of course I won't do anything. Don't worry. As long as it's your real face, I'm sure I'll... Why are you laughing? I'm being serious. When Xilin reached the last part, he could feel the youth next to him shaking. He froze for a moment at first and thought, Are my words so moving that he's touched like this? And was too embarrassed to turn around to see. But after a while, the soft laughter from next to him very obviously leaked out. Xilin felt rather deflated and placed a hand on his shoulder to give it a little push. Xianlong, why are you laughing so much? Did I say something wrong? Hua Cheng immediately stopped shaking and turned around. No, you're very right. Xilin felt even more deflated at those words. You're so insincere. I promise, you won't find another person more sincere than me in this world. Hua Cheng replied. Xilin didn't want to talk anymore and flipped over, his back facing Hua Cheng. Forget it. Time to sleep. Don't talk. Hua Cheng chuckled again, then said, Next time. Even though he was determined to sleep, hearing Hua Cheng speak, Xie Lin couldn't resist replying, What's next time? Hua Cheng whispered, The next time we meet, I will use my true appearance to greet you. There was much to ponder about those words, and Xie Lin should have kept questioning him. But after a long night, an unstoppable drowsiness overtook him, and he couldn't hang on, falling into a deep slumber. The next morning, when Xilin woke, the spot next to him was already empty. He scrambled to get up and walked around the shrine in a daze. When he opened the door, there were no figures to be seen outside. It seemed like it was true. The youth had indeed left. However, the fallen leaves had been swept into a pile, and next to that pile stood a small clay pot. Xilin took the pot inside and placed it on the altar. Right then, he suddenly noticed that there seemed to be something extra on his usually bare chest. He raised his hand to touch it, and found just below the cursed collar there was an exceedingly thin chain hanging loose and light. Xilin immediately removed it from his neck. Turned out, it was a silver chain, so thin and light that he hadn't felt anything on him before. And dangling from the chain, there was a crystal clear ring.